40 years right now. And as you say, we're, we're very well known for our scanners and for our forms, uh, which are used by pretty much every district in the country. Um, what people don't know as much about us is that we're actually into a lot more than just scanners and forms. We've been doing online assessment, formative assessment, item bank development, and analytics for many years as well. One of the things we've been doing for many years is collecting large amounts of data across districts. And what we're seeing is that there's more and more of a need to not only be collecting data, but also putting that data into a cent centralized place and then having tools on top to actually analyze and make sense of that data. One of the things we also see a, a big need for is being able to disaggregate the data very quickly. Obviously, there are accountability um, requirements that districts have. And so being very able to very, very quickly take a, a large amount of data and to break it out by ethnicity, by gender, um, by children who are maybe on, on free or reduced lunch, and, and to look at it by those different dimensions. We talk to a lot of districts that say, look, we've got too much change going on right now. We can only really successfully handle one or two things a year. If we try and do 10 things in a year, we've got no idea what's working, what's not. So let's just try and focus on getting a couple of things done correctly, get those in place, year one and then yeah, year two we'll do another couple, year three another couple and it's, it, it's a, I think that from what I've seen seems to be a much more, um, it's a lot more easier to manage and plan around that type of change process versus trying to do too many things all at once. There's often a lot of confusion about just what does analytics mean, first of all. What is the difference between analytics and dashboards, analytics and reporting, analytics and, and charting products? Um, one of the things I, I, I like to talk about is, is, is this, and it's, it's probably a little bit small, but it's, it's a Rubik's Cube. And, um, and I actually have one of these on my desk, because I use it quite a lot um, in, in describing analytics to, to, to customers. The way that I think about analytics is really around thinking about a cube and thinking about being able to bring all your data into one place and very easily look at different faces of the cube, first of all, so I can look at my, my student data by grade level, look at it by ethnicity, look at it by gender, look at it by special ad versus not special ad. So each face of the cube you can very quickly easily rotate, look at things in different ways. But I can also very easily slice and dice my data. And so being able to slice and dice data very, very quickly and easily and get down to very specific, answer very specific questions and get to a very specific slice of my data, that, that to me is the true test of an analytics product. One of the first things that happens when you bring in data from many different sources from a student information system, from multiple assessment sources, and put it all in one place, is that you see things that you've never even been aware of before because it was buried. It was buried in assists, it was buried in multiple spreadsheets, it never really came to life. So one, one example would be grade inflation. Um, typically you know, grades, again, grade, grade data is in a grade book, it gets into the SIS, and while you have reports about your grades, you, you, you seldom see, for example, how many A's have been given in all my schools across the district, how many B's, how many C's, how many F's. So we actually had a district that for the first time they came to a single chart that showed here across your district, here are how many, how many A's, B's, C's, D's and F's have been given by all your schools. And what they saw was that a very high percentage of grades were A's, I think about 45% were A's another 35% were Bs, and then the remainder were Cs, Ds, and Fs. And so this was kind of a, an, an aha moment for them because they'd never before really had that visibility district-wide to all the grading or all the different grade levels, all the schools, seeing it all in, in a single chart in a single place. And so from that, they, 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 their thought was, wow, either we have a bunch of really, really brilliant students doing really, really well, or we have some grade inflation going on, and maybe students, or maybe teachers are giving students grades that, that you know, giving them A's and B's, when, when realistically they, they probably should be giving B's and C's or C's and F's. And one of the things that, I think, going back to the cube example, one of the things they can then do is to say, let's look at these students that get A's. Okay, that's, that's kind of one face of the cube, students that get A's. Now let's pop across to some assessments. Let's look at the, the, the 11th grade a students in math, let's look at their ACT scores or their SAT scores. How many of these students that are getting A's in math are meeting ACT benchmark? And again, the way our product works is that's a single click. You, 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 you select your students, you go, across, you go across from a grade view to a, an assessment view like ACT, and you can see straight away, well, wow, of, our, of all these students getting A's, only 20% were meeting ACT benchmark. 
it's all about having data-based conversations with, with people and, and starting from, well, here are the facts, you know, all these students got A's, only 20% of A's got, got a, an ACT benchmark. Let's use that as a starting point to say, should these two things be correlated? Maybe they shouldn't, but at least it's a starting point for a discussion. That there's been a movement in schools for probably at least five, maybe 10 years in some schools around data. Um, data teams, uh, data management, data reporting. And I think data is great. Data is a, is a great starting point. It's a great foundation for having any discussion. But I think what we're also seeing now is that people have been kind of flooded with data for many years. They're, they're kind of drowning in data. Data is in spreadsheets. It's in multiple locations. I mean, just to share another another story with you, I, I, we, we, we talked to high school principals, for example. High school principals are literally drowning in data. They've got multiple spreadsheets they're trying to manage. They're, they're pulling in data from multiple different places, often to report up to a district. And this is taking them, in some cases, two weeks out of every month. As a high school principal, I'm spending two weeks at my desk trying to, trying to make sense of my data. And quite frankly, that's not productive use of anyone's time. I mean, it's time that they should be spent out there in the hallways, talking to teachers, meeting with students, you know, trying to, trying to have much more influence in the classroom versus being stuck behind their desk in a spreadsheet. And so we actually, one of our one of our recent customers, it was actually, I think it either, it was a middle school principal who said that what was previously taking them two weeks to do on a, on a regular basis was now taking them literally minutes with Scantron Analytics. And, and we see, and, and, that's, and that's obviously a fantastic productivity improvement, but it also, for me, more importantly means this is a person that's able to walk the halls instead of sitting behind a desk playing with, with a spreadsheet. We see a lot of different vendors out there that have lots of different reporting, dashboarding, analytics solutions. And I think that there's a, a, a lot of confusion in, in superintendents' minds, even in, in the minds of, of research directors, about how are all these different products different? What are they going to do for me? What's one going to do for me that another's not going to do for me? And, and in particular, I see that there's a lot of people have dashboards, which, which look great. You know, they're, they're beautiful, shiny objects. They, they, you know, they've got lovely charts and um, it's colorful and, and lots of different types of charts. And I think that that is, is a great kind of way of going above like rows and columns in a spreadsheet. You, you always want to, I mean, people are not great about interpreting rows and rows and columns of numbers. I mean, we're just not. Computers are great at that, people not so much. We, we really need to be able to visualize things. So getting kind of getting beyond the rows and columns of data into something that's more graphical, like a dashboard, so with, with some nice charts and so on, that's a great first step. But what we're seeing, though, is, is that a lot of people are talking about these dashboards as being analytics, in quotes. And from our perspective, it's really not. Um, from our perspective, it goes back to this, the, 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 um, the Rubik's Cube analogy. To get true analytics, it, you have to have dashboards. That's a great starting point. But really, under, underneath the covers, you've still got to be able to slice and dice your data. You've got to be able to, to drill up, up and down and sideways very, very quickly and easily to, to really get the insights that you, you, you need from your, from your data. So again, a lot of dashboards we see, they're, they're static. Um, it, it's, it's a great picture. What do I do with the picture? I want to be able to click on it, drill down into it, look at things in more detail. Um, and that's what a lot of these dashboard products today can't, can't do. What, what is the end result we're trying to get to from all this analytics? And I think that the answer there is, again, it, it's about getting deeper insights into understanding what is happening in my district and why is it happening so that I can go fix it. That is the ultimate goal, is, 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 is find, getting all this data figuring out why something's happening, and so when you get down to the root cause, then you can go and address that root cause. I think that, to me, is the ultimate reason why you're doing all this analytics stuff, is to, is to quickly and easily identify root causes of what's, of what's happening in your district so that you can go fix them.